this week on the Baseline Podcast. Josh and I are back talking about football. This time we are talking about the free agency in the NFL. We're talking about all the crazy moves, especially as the running backs are just moving from left to right, from north to south. Switching teams is a crazy year to be a running back, but we also talk about all the other moves from wide receivers to linebackers, defensive ends to quarterbacks, and what is going to happen with those that were we thought would move teams, but they haven't yet. And finally, we're going to talk about Ohio State football losing Tony Alford to the team up north. And what does that mean for Ohio State and Michigan for the future? All that and so much more coming up on the Baseline Podcast. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Baseline Podcast. I'm Ben. That's Josh. And we are back after a um, a week of regretting our NFL mock drafts within the first but we recorded the episode and not within like 24 hours or it was like 36 hours. I felt like I was like, you know, everything that I just said. And now that I'm putting together in a post at now that I'm putting together the episode, I regret all of it. At least not all of it. I, I shouldn't exaggerate. But Josh, I feel like we, we do this every year and it's like the worst timing whenever we release it because it always just backfires after the first one. Well, everybody always releases their first mock drafts before like the off season officially gets underway. And I can even think of a couple of the picks, like now that the Falcons got Kirk Cousins, that obviously means Jaden no Daniels is not going to be somebody they're going to go and draft. Uh, Mac Jones is out of New England, so, so Brock that Bowers means is that New England. <laughs> New England's probably going to get a quarterback, and most of the free agent ones that we thought might be on the move are already signed. So and what's happening? They Justin might Fields. not be going out to buy one. Yeah, uh, yeah. So. Maybe a couple uh, adjusted picks there, yeah. but yeah, it's, good times. It's, it's but I think it, but I think it makes it fun though. Like I think that's what makes it like yeah. I think that's what makes that fun. I think it's what makes like March Madness fun is like you put all your stock into like one thing and then just chaos erupts. Well, it's not it's even fun. necessarily stock. It's just like once you get new information, obviously you're going to change your yeah. mind. Unless you're like, crazy. Yeah. By the way, the Brock Bowers pick is the pick that I think I personally got the most flack for out of our whole entire. You mock did, draft. by the way. I had <laughs> I had someone I I had two players on my team, right? Because they like they saw our pose, like I I posted the the picks, and I remember them looking. They're like, "That's where Brock Bowers is going." Like they like they knew mine yeah. was a little bit like they're like, "Okay, he's not going to go three, but they're like, I can at least understand that." Like I think a lot of people are like, "Really, you have him going where?" Mm-hmm. I was like, listen, that's Josh, man. That's not me. I'm just the one that makes it. I just do it. I just put it together. No, shout yeah. out, shout out my friend Trent. He's actually a Patriots fan and he was just like, what the heck is this? And I was like, I mean, you'll have to listen to the episode, but Brock Bowers does seem like a New England type pick. I just don't think it will go at three or four or five or honestly, maybe 10 at the highest. The one, I, the one I got the flack for, though, and this is also not fair. Someone gave me flack for Bo Nix, but I'm like, OK, that's we didn't know Baker was signing. So I was going with like, OK, that I don't know why people got to like it. They're like, what Bo Nix? He's better than J.J. McCarthy. I'm like, yes, 100 percent. Yes. Like <laughs> absolutely. Uh, was there any other things that like you look back on your your mock draft and you're like as soon as we like maybe posted it or as soon as you saw it out, you're like, man, I really should change that one. Because for me, uh, it was let like me go the, ahead and look at mine real quick because the end of the, the first round for me, I feel like I'm gonna completely redo next week, uh, or the next time we do it. Cause I feel like I just w- took stuff way too like in focus and I didn't really like look beyond what was the needs and stuff. Yeah, what's uh? I'm trying to think. Did the Raiders go and get a quarterback? Um, they brought in a backup. I thought, and that's what it was. Or like a guy to go with McConnell, uh, to like to compete with him. I'm trying Not to remember. Sure I I know they've made a couple uh interesting moves. Like they've gotten. Well, I know they Wilkins released Garoppolo. The they Dolphins. just released Garoppolo today. So that one's that's like now there is an open competition there. I gotta check this out. I thought they added a quarterback. Not a huge one, but no. still one. None well, even for me, the other one I'm re- I'm really going to look into is the quarterbacks because Minshew, I did... Gardner Minshew, yeah, is who that they was the signed. one. Yeah, but I think that we was both one I was like, say, okay, maybe. I think we both said though but... that I think outside the top two quarterbacks, I think we're both going to probably relook at our quarterback picks because I think the first two we kind of know who's going where, or at least we think yeah. we do, and then I think the rest is like, how wild do we get? Do we put five quarterbacks in the first eleven picks? Right, like is yeah. that what's going to happen? Which like would be this wild. is as crazy as I might go is like New England. 
probably thinking quarterback, but I don't think they're going to reach for one at three. And I think Washington is in the same boat as them where they're under new management, new ownership. They want a new guy. They want to go and get their guy. So I don't know if New England's going to be able to trade into the two spot. Could they trade into the They'll one tra- spot? They might trade down. Chicago has already done this last yeah. year, right? Yeah. That'd be crazy. If and they I, went and did it I, I would be shocked too but... if the Bears the Bears do a uh, Texans like last year, and they trade up to get maybe a, a there maybe they get Harrison right like you never know like it's that possible you could trade up and, and do what you got to do so, but yeah. Anyways. Uh, the other thing too, Minnesota now that oh Kirk that's Cousins the other one I, there, yeah, that's, that changes that things could too. be a, a quarterback situation that could be a Jaden Daniels dude the situation, perfect spot maybe. for that though, could Minnesota. Be a, Drake May or Bo Nix, I feel like fits like Minnesota, like those two guys, or maybe even Penix. I feel like Penix could fit in that that kind of system. But according to Minnesota, they're not releasing Justin Jefferson or trading him. Which why would they? It's just stupid. Interesting. I know that they mentioned Jefferson of the Bengals, and obviously Joe oh, Burrow, Jamar Chase, and Justin yeah. Jefferson reuniting from the 2019 LSU offense would be yeah. crazy. Uh, the one other team that I'll throw out that might be in the market for a quarterback is maybe the Jets because Aaron Rodgers could be the new vice president oh, no, of the dude, United oh States my in due dude, time. What, what so. is happening? Josh, what in the world <laughs> is going on in this world when you have your ticket? I'm not kidding you. For your presidential ticket could be Joe Biden, who you all know my opinions on him. Kamala Harris as VP. Then you have Donald Trump and whoever he throws on the card. And then Robert Kennedy Jr. and Aaron Rodgers. And like, Aaron Rodgers. What are what are we doing? <laughs> like, dude, Kennedy Rodgers. I don't and even it, care. And think I, about I it. Then you that. have then you have Kenny Rogers, right? Like the country singer Kenny Rogers. What if he does the music for them? Like Kennedy Rogers. When you got Kenny Rogers, dude, I'm just saying. The gambler. I'm just saying. Well, we're all, we're all set. Truly, could be some. But uh, enough of that. We're, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, Josh, yeah. I know you NFL have a whole slew of things, wild. and we have some yes. college news that we do want to break that just happened today as we're recording this, but we'll talk about that a little later on. Josh, break it away. Yeah, NFL offseason, so huge first day. I was asleep for is most it a first of it, day or is it, some others. is it, is it, we're allowed to tamper now three days before, like what, what what's the rule now? Well, everything that's like official, <laughs> the teams are actually putting on their Instagram accounts and announcing and things like that, whatever, so. Yeah. Why don't we go through yes. the quarterback market first? Because like we just said, a lot of quarterbacks moved around. We're going to have – we have some answers to our draft, and we might even have some teams now that will be looking for one in the next mock draft. But the most notable one, I think, was Kirk Cousins to the Falcons of yes. all teams. Four years, Too much $180 million. Too much dollars. Initial reactions. It sounds like you don't, aren't a fan I, of the no, amount I mean, we're okay. giving. I, I, don't, I don't mind – like, look, I think Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. I think he can get you what you need. Like, right. I think there's the tiers, right? You have the Patrick Mahomes of the world and you know you, that tier. Then you have that kind of like a, a probably a good, almost great tier. And then I feel like you have Kirk Cousins, right? In the good tier. I, I just think that if you're the Falcons, like, is this what you want to build your team around? Like I, to me, the more obvious move was like you give up some draft picks, some draft capital, and you get it. Justin Fields, a Georgia guy, you bring him into Atlanta and you build around it, but, or is it Atlanta really wants to go towards a more traditional quarterback and you want to build on that run game with Robinson. You want to build on that kind of that passing game more for the pocket style. I don't know. I, to me, it just seems like a lot of money for a guy that's what 33. I think he's like 33, I think, or something like that. He's got to be 35, I think. So four years. So you're talking, you think that's going to be four years of productivity. Um, 35. yeah, He'll just turn a, 36 in August. Yeah, it's just, it's just a question for me. I, I again, I don't, I can't say that it's a terrible move because again, I don't know what Kurt's going to be like this year. But um, he does have the weapons if you if you can put the right pieces around him. Yeah, uh, I'm surprised it was Atlanta too, and I'm not even really like I like Kirk Cousins more than Justin Fields as an option at quarterback. Yeah, I, I get it. Yeah, the. The one thing that I've been seeing go around on Twitter is everybody's talking about how Atlanta now passed up giving Lamar Jackson two hundred million dollars last year to give Kirk Cousins a hundred and eighty million dollars. Why not, dude? And when you were... frame it like that, I hate that for them. It's just it's just... four years, two hundred million to Lamar looks way better right now than four years, one hundred and eighty to Kirk. 
I mean, it's not as bad as a deal as what the the Giants did with Daniel Jones. So, I mean, you know, yes, four years, one hundred sixty million to Daniel Jones. I mean, let's be honest, though, the, as Browns the fans, quarterback contract. As Browns fans, we really don't have much to talk. So, <laughs> we're kind of, we're kind yeah. of the same. Uh, boat, so <laughs> we're we're still riding that out into what year four of this, hoping that yes. it works out. Maybe we'll um, see. We'll we'll talk more specific Browns moves as we go on, but that's one quarterback move uh, that I think shocked. Uh, probably the second biggest one was Russell Wilson to Pittsburgh. I hate it. I just like as a Browns fan, just you hate that. Me nuts. You it, hate that. No. Is that does do you hate okay. it because it scares you? No, 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 no. I don't think it scares. It doesn't scare me, right? Like we haven't seen Russ be Russ since his what second to last year in Seattle. I think it was the last time we saw Russ Probably. be true. We've true we've Russ. seen like three years in a row now of Russell yeah. not being the and quarterback that we knew him to be. I have a lot of Steelers fans over here. I have friends that are Steelers fans. And, you know, they're like, oh, we got him for a bargain. I'm like, yeah, but what Russ are you getting? Are you getting the Russ that was like the middle to the end of last year or the beginning of the last year? Or are you getting the year before? Like, what version are you getting? And, yeah, but you still need to, like, I, I feel like there needs to be some more building in that offense. Again, that it's just there's so many pieces, but can they put it together? Again, their defense is going to be loaded. Um, I think it's more just annoying because it's like, why is the AFC North had to be so freaking hard? And the NFC South can be like, if the Browns was the NFC South, they'd win it every year. Like, that's what that's what bothers me so much. It's like the AFC and NFC South is like the the two comp, the two divisions where you can just walk through with a half decent team. Yeah, bargain. I agree. One year, like they're paying one point two million or something like mm-hmm. that. It's a clear upgrade from Mason Rudolph, Kenny Pickett. Mitchell oh. Trubisky. Did you hear so David Cohn's fact? Going last year. Did you hear David Cohn's fact, by the way, about uh, Kenny Pickett? That if in fact. 1944, okay, if the, the numbers he had last year, I think he had 13 touchdown passes or something like that last year. If you take that season and you put him in the 1944 season, he'd still rank dead last in touchdown passes. That's crazy because that they is, didn't even throw the ball. Exactly. Probably. And and one of the Crane brothers said, I forget which one it was, said, yeah, and we were storming the beaches of Normandy in the same year. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, that was probably Blaine. That's just that's just a stab in the heart to all Steelers fans. It's like you said it this is. was your guy. That's like you said this is your. That's guy. how bad Kenny Pickett has been. Yes. So, what this means to me is that Russell Wilson is going to be not a long term fix, but no. maybe a couple a year years or two. Yeah. until a quarterback in the draft becomes available that they can feel really good about. And maybe they even take that guy this year. It won't be Drake Kyle May McCord. or Caleb Williams, but maybe they like Michael Penix. Maybe they like J.J. Bo McCarthy Nicks. or Bo Nix. And you don't have to start him right away. That's so true. Weird move, but... I okay. like this move. It, it it doesn't scare me as a Browns fan, no. like I was saying, but for Pittsburgh, I think it, this is like the best thing they could have done for the quarterback room, honestly. Is it is it scary to think the AFC North, any team in the AFC North could probably win either South division? <laughs> hmm. Like, honestly, if you look at the talent on all the rosters, maybe not the Bengals as much, but the other three, I feel like they could compete and maybe win the any either of the South divisions hmm. with the talent we have. It's possible. It's possible. Nuts. Uh Next big quarterback signing, I think, is one that's staying put, and that's Baker Mayfield in Tampa Bay. Yeah. Three years, $100 million. It sounds like a lot, but when you look at Daniel Jones' contract and Kirk Cousins' contract and Ryan Tannehill's contract, he's he's actually on the lower end, I think, of most starting quarterbacks. So you're averaging $33 million a year to Baker. That's the kind of money that the Cleveland Browns, I think, were talking about giving him before they eventually traded to Carolina and went out and got Deshaun. We've seen Baker Mayfield just have the best season of his career but we've also seen him be inconsistent throughout his yeah. career. But we've seen when he has talent around him, what kind of a player he and can Mike be. And Mike Evans is coming And back. I think – and Mike Evans is back. He wants to be a buck for life, yes. So that is a move that I love as well for Tampa Bay, for Baker Mayfield. I love that he's going to get to be a starting quarterback here now yeah. for three more years in a system that has talent that is around him, that he can you know be his best self. And again, you're in the NFC South. So, I mean – if you want to be in a division that you can chance you to got win. Carolina who just Same. is sending away all their star players Saints for as well. picks. You got the saints that release and everyone like uh, block anybody and stop anybody. And then you got who else in that division? Is it uh Atlanta? Yeah. Who has a brain quarterback seven and 10, three straight seasons. Yeah. 
So I, again, I, I like it for Baker again. I I've kind of toned down on my Baker stance, you know, from a couple of years ago. I've, I've, I guess my thing with Baker has been is like, he's just, there's times where he looks like a hall of fame quarterback. And then there's times where it's like, dude, you should have been like a seventh round pick. Right. So to me, it's, if you get the Baker, that's the first round pick, the first overall pick, then you are going to be in, in Tampa Bay. You're going to be in the playoffs for the next three years. Um, but again, I think it just depends on what happens. Yeah. Um, we're going to see, I think, I think uh, throughout the years too, Baker's done some growing up. There's not so much that, that immature always having to clap back, not the back guy anymore. I think he's doesn't have to yes. be that guy anymore. Yeah. It's time to win some football games, but exactly. we'll see. We all we also know that in the big moments, like like in that Detroit uh, game too, where he, he was in position, where it's like two minute drive to send it to overtime, and he threw a pick on the first place. Like that's also something that I hate about Baker is that if he's in those situations, he doesn't do well. But yeah, yeah. For for what he did this season, I mean, this there's definitely room to grow, and he's given I think Tampa Bay hope. So. Mm-hmm. There's a couple other small quarterback moves too. Like I don't know if you want to touch Minshew. too much on them. Like Gardner Minshew going to the Raiders, uh, Marcus Mariota Brissett. going to the Redskins, Jameis Winston going to Cleveland, Brissett going to New England. Yes, uh, Mitchell the, Trubisky going. I will back say to this. Buffalo. I've heard the rumors about Joe Flacco is that Joe Flacco wanted to come back to Cleveland, and Cleveland said no. Now. I've heard this, mm. and I want to get your take on this because Jameis, like, I don't really care. It's a backup. Like to me, it's not like a a huge deal for me. But I want to get your take on this. The rumor is is that obviously Joe wanted to come back, but there's a lot of people saying that the Browns didn't want this like weird vibe going in the locker room where it's like if let's say Deshaun struggles for like a week and a week or two weeks, and everyone's like looking like, well, hey, look, there's the comeback player of the year, and he did lead us to the playoffs, like. Do you feel like do you feel like that's part of it? Is like they just don't want this awkward like from some players that might be like, hey, this guy actually like led us to the playoffs or from fans or whatever it might be? Or do you think it's more like Jameis fits what we're trying to do, which I don't necessarily believe, but I'm just interested to see what you think. Yeah, if that's the case, I I think that's pretty logical thinking is you never want to have like a quarterback controversy in the room, you want to have a guy that is your clear starter and a guy that is your clear backup. I think last year when we started the season off, we just had such a big drop off between starter and backup. That was just like, we need to go and get somebody else, which is why they went and got Flacco to begin with. And I don't know what Joe Flacco wants. If he wants to be a starter, if he thought he proved that he can still be a starter and wants that for himself. I assume if he wanted to come back to Cleveland, that's the rumor that he would have understood he was going to be backing up to Sean Watson, but I do get it. I mean, that's the reason why Cam Newton has not been signed in the past. Like the, the more popular backup quarterbacks where it's like, it's too close of, yeah. to, to the point where it could be controversial. You would just rather not have that at all. And Jameis is going to be a guy that comes in and I mean, he can sling it. We've seen him sling it before. We've seen him be a, a turnover problem before, but he's like a really solid backup quarterback still. But also not anybody that I think anybody's going to wish would start over Deshaun Watson though, either. Man. Eight million's rich to be given a backup quarterback. Well, that's like what we're seeing, like from most of the, the back, backup quarterbacks now, right? Is they're they're pushing like that double digit mark. Yeah, it's it's Just nuts. Hold but, a clipboard. So yeah, I, I mean, I I personally wish we had Joe Flacco back. I mean, like what Joe did Me for too. the city. And this thing is like, I feel like even if you went back to the Ravens or anywhere, I feel like all of us Browns fans would have this like really soft spot for him, like. This guy like came off the couch to like help us. And I think that hats off to Joe. Like I'm very thankful for Joe Flacco. Like he really helped our season, but I also get maybe where maybe Andrew Barry says, Hey, we don't, we want maybe a veteran guy, but it's younger, right? That guy's going to be, could be here for a couple of years to back up rather than just a year. And maybe we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, New York had Lynn Sanity and, and Cleveland had Flacco. We'll, we'll never forget it regardless. Flacco the wacko. I don't know. Uh, but I will say Flacco, that probably Flacco. the most expi- exciting thing about all free agency, I'm sure we're about to talk about, is running back was about the, the – probably the most exciting. It was, everything else was kind of boring. Yes. Nothing really crazy that's, happened. That's where I was going to go next is just what was it? Last season, all the running backs were in Zoom calls talking about how it's not fair that they don't get paid anything or 
whatever it was. They don't get any and, attention. It's like that no one yeah. like, cares. And then this this off season now Just has them. been like all about the running backs. And obviously none of them are signing like huge like double digit Cheeky Barbers calling per out people. year contracts, but we're seeing a lot of, I think, solid contracts, I think, to yeah. these guys. Um, I mean, just going through the board, like, I'm probably going to forget also, some. We've just seen also Saquon. mad, Just also mad that the Browns did absolutely barely nothing in the running back market, which really bothers me. But that's besides the point. It it makes you wonder. Let's let's start with uh, the running backs that did move, and then we'll touch on Cleveland's running back situation. Yeah. But Saquon Barkley to Philly, I think. That's is just funny. The, the to headliner. me, that's just funny. That's the dude. headliner. A division so in division rival. Tiki Barber team. called him out and he's like, dude, yeah, I don't his, care. <laughs> we never like, even talked. Care. Yeah, I, I don't, don't even care. care. Like the Giants weren't loyal to Saquon. They gave all dude, their money to Daniel Jones, him. who had Yeah. Like if I'm Saquon, I feel the same way as you gave all of the money that I rightfully deserved because I carried the team on my back to Daniel Jones and you had none left to give me. So I'm gonna go to a team that is very running back friendly and that is going to respect me. I just think it's very funny because I heard a lot of people say like franchise tags, like the insult to a player. It's like, Hey, we don't really want to like spend the time to negotiate. So we're just going to f- slap on a, a tag. Well, we don't want to commit long-term and yeah. the tag does pay you like the average of like the top 10 at your position. So it's like a nice pay, but it's also for like, the year. Hey, but it's also no guarantee that in three years, you're going to still be there. Exactly. Yes. So it's very easy to do that to running backs. Once if they're a first rounder, you finish your five-year contract. And then you tag them twice. And then by that point, they're about 29 years old. Like dead. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, okay, not a second contract. Yeah. But yeah, speaking of Philly, so the reason that that hole even came up is because DeAndre Swift went and signed with Chicago, which we'll That's talk about next. Brush. But, so but cool. yeah, Philly, Philly getting Saquon, I think, is huge. Uh, I've seen a, a lot of great Ooh. jokes about how Saquon's going to be disappointed when they finally get to the goal line. He's either going to be getting taken out so that Kenneth Gainwell can come in, or he's going to find that he's just going to be shoving Jalen Hurts' butt into the end zone. That is true, without Jason Kelsey, which is <laughs> which is the other crazy Without one. Jason Kelsey, so it's going to be a lot harder, but good thing he has Saquads that can help push him in. That is true. I will say, uh, just breaking news right now, this is like just happened as we're recording, Calvin Ridley has signed a four-year, $92 million deal, $50 million guaranteed with the Tennessee Titans, just so everyone knows. Wow. Which is the weirdest wow. place for him to go, but that's that's a whole other bit. Story that is crazy. That is crazy. But speaking about we'll, running backs, we'll touch on some yes. receiver moves, but yes. Speaking about running backs, yeah, I I think the 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 weirdest one, obviously, Swift going to to um um Chicago, Chicago, like it it's kind of weird, but I, I kind of get it. I kind of wish he would have went to Cleveland. I think that's what would have fit him really well. Um, but the only the other one like Eckler going to he went to what Washington to Washington it's just weird like dude you went from a mm-hmm. bad team to a bad team like you really didn't like improve yourself on places um, not a, yeah I don't know if he got in a better situation necessarily. the Browns signed Na- Naheem Hines which I'm like uh um I'm trying to think of else oh oh yeah the, the biggest one I'm Jacobs sure you're about to, talk. to Green Bay yeah the, even bigger than that Derrick Henry going to Derrick the Ravens to it's not even fair. Is this even fair now to go against the Ravens offense? Like, like what are we doing now? Like, triple option. Yeah, with, J- triple J.K. Option Dobbins with... will will play week one, be out for this season, and then you got to go through Derrick Henry. You got to go through Gus Edwards, and you got to go through. Imagine the triple option, man, with Gus Edwards, Lamar. Yeah. Oh my. Well, according to Gus Edwards, I suppose that Gus Edwards is going to the Chargers. I saw a. It, it said there's a a deal pending. I believe for Gus Edwards, I believe to go to the Chargers. Mm. Don't quote me on that, but I did see an article about that. So there's a chance he so won't possibly. be. There. But even then, okay. even then, even imagine still, the, imagine Derek an Henry option with Baltimore. Derek Henry and Lamar Jackson. That's just terrifying. Yes. Oh. Just yes. Two former Heisman Trophy uh, winners in the backfield. Hmm. Yeah, Derek to Baltimore. I, that's a really good move. That like that fits said, like, though. Doesn't that after, feel like a Baltimore sa- pick? That just feels like a Baltimore guy. Maybe some of the older Baltimore teams. I think of like Baltimore as more speed right now. But yes, as a as a traditional Baltimore Raven, I I can see that for sure. Right after Saquon to Philly, I think that's like the next big one for sure. Yeah. The running back, Josh world. Jacobs. That that one I think makes the Packers really good. I think that puts it because they got rid of, which I think is hilarious. They get rid of their Aaron Jones back. is out now, right? Yeah, but he's going to uh, Minnesota. So I just think going it's hilarious. Okay. He's like, he's basically like a middle finger. He's like, all right, you don't want me anymore. 
I'm just gonna walk across to the other team and uh, gonna be wearing mm-hmm. purple. It's like it's like a Brett Favre thing again, just like all over. Right. Uh, and then Joe Mixon uh, cut from Cincinnati that was weird, goes man. to Houston. That was just the timing weird. of it all. Yeah, yeah, it was weird. Like Cincinnati waited. Like, did they get a running back to replace him? Yes, they got. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head now. But I do know what the weird though is. They did. They were going to release Mix. They were going to release Mixon, and then they decided to trade him, which was weird. It's like a weird like thing. So I think they end up who they get. I remember seeing it. They got someone. It was Zach Moss. Yeah, which that one I feel like there's a downgrade, personally. I don't. Yeah, I don't know if like because you signed Zach Moss, you feel like you're good enough to cut Joe Mixon now. No, it's kind of like with yeah, and well, I know we we can talk about the Browns. Like, I think yeah, we don't know when Nick Chubb's coming back. We don't know how healthy he's going to be. Uh, do I trust who we have in the backfield right now? And you add Naheem Hines, like no. Like I'll Naheem be honest, Hines with Jerome Ford and like I just I'm, I, it Kareem doesn't Hunt, if they keep him probably not now. There's so many guys out there that are just better, and this is not a great running back class in the draft. So I mean, I just I just to me it's frustrating. I just feel like the Browns could have done something, spent a little more cash in the running back market, and got somebody maybe a little bit more of a not just a scat back that just gets passes. Because Naheem Hines missed all last year with a boating accident. So it's like, what are we going to get? That's the, that's the question. Yeah, if your uh, concern is Chubb's health, why did you get another running back that, I guess, is also kind of coming in the same boat season and an injury situation? Don't get it. Don't get it. To pair up with, I would assume. I mean, but then Andrew right? Barry still trades for Jerry Judy. So, you know what? I just don't get him. I, I don't. <laughs> let's kick off the wide receiver talk with the Jerry Judy. Yes, let's trade. do it. Because I feel like everyone thinks – Jerry Judy is still Alabama Jerry Judy, except he's been in the league for five years and has been probably the worst wide receiver taken in that first round besides yeah. Henry Ruggs yeah, because sure. of what he, he did, did off the yeah. field. But CD Lamb, if you don't know, look it up. him. If you don't know, look Justin, Je- yeah, <laughs> CD Lamb and Justin Jefferson have clearly outperformed him. The, the the route running skills are still there when you watch the film. Is like he has Judy explosive can run any route. He has some explosive. Yes, plays. but it's just like. It's just like we're waiting for Judy to like you know break out. This is going to be the season, but, but I feel like he is what he is at this point. Fifth, but for only six, giving up yes. a fifth and a sixth round pick, I love bad, it for man. a wide receiver too. I and, love it. And this is the other thing too is they they wanted him last year. The price was too high. Like that was very obvious. Yes. Like the price was really high. They were not going to give him. Up. He was coming off a pretty good year. Look, they're not asking Jerry Judy to be the guy. Like right, at least right now, they're not saying, "Hey, you go be the guy. You just get yourself in a position where you can just be a complimentary guy to David Nujoku, to to Cooper, right?" But now you can shift Jerry Jude around. You could play him in the slot a little bit. You could play him outside. You know, like I still think I don't know about you, but I think they still need to go draft a receiver in the draft this year. They need to get a speed guy. They have to go out and get someone that can run, a, you know, a four four. Like or a four three, um, I think they need that that kind of guy. Um, but again, for a fifth and six, if you would have told me they could get Jerry Judy, a former first round pick, for a fifth and six, I would have been like, "You're crazy." But um, hey, here we are, and we got yeah. a really good good wide receiver number two. Yeah, I I know I got my bones to pick with Andrew Barry sometimes, but I'm going to give him credit this on this really one, one because he That's went out really and got one. what Amari Cooper for a fifth rounder before. Yep. And has gone out and gotten Judy for a fifth and sixth. I'm going to go ahead and read off Jerry Judy's stats right now. Uh, I have heard that last year only 66% of the passes thrown at him were catchable. So that take true. that for what it's worth with Russell Wilson situation. But with Russ at quarterback the last two seasons, he's gone for 972 yards and six touchdowns and 758 yards and two touchdowns. We're Nothing all we're asking that's for is like make 700 yards. Super man. excited, but yes. 700 if, yards. That's all we're asking for. This is kind of. I mean, he was kind of a wide receiver too in Denver, anyways, because of Cortland Sutton yeah. being over there. So if if we can get that from a wide receiver too, and then you got Elijah Moore as like your true slot and receiver, Najoku at tight tight end, and Najoku at tight end, yeah. And then I don't know about drafting a receiver. I know they got Tillman in the third round last year, and we still don't have really a high enough pick to really get a game changing guy. Yeah. So know. is what it is there, but yeah, Jerry Judy to Cleveland, I love it, and then. Now that we're, uh, you already broke the news. Let's talk yeah. about Calvin Ridley to Tennessee now. I don't get it. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't. Why would why? you? Uh, do you not get it because 
they let Henry walk or it looks like they're trying to rebuild, but then they go and make a move like like this. But it feels like you're going to rebuild. I don't know if going out and getting a receiver and giving him that much money, like who's going to be your quarterback? Who who, uh, do you believe Will Elvis is your guy? Do you, like I, I don't know. It just feels a little odd. Like I, and also for Calvin Ridley, like is that where you want to be the number one at? Is is the question? You know. Yeah that that is a weird one. I'm I'm checking right now. Um, some things. DeAndre Hopkins is still over here, right? Yep. Yep. In Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he's under contract for a few more years. So you got you got D Hop over there. You got Calvin Ridley. I'm sure most quarterbacks would be pretty happy with that as a one-two punch. For Will Levis, so credit to Tennessee for going out and helping him out there. And did they sign anybody else? I don't believe so. I they might have signed maybe some like no name guys, but I don't think there was anything big. I think there was a running back. It was Tony Pollard. Yeah, Tony, Tony Pollard from the Cowboys. Yep. I feel like I feel like with Tony Pollard, like he's been really consistent. But how is the offense going to change? Because you had a very downhill, like, blow-up running back in Derrick Henry. Now you have more of a guy that's going to be out in the open and and causing trouble. So we'll see what the Titans are going to be like. Their defense this, is not This is great. making me a little a little more interested in Tennessee, not going to lie, after, like, just, like, talking all these out. So Will Levis going into year two. You've got DeAndre Hopkins, Traylon Burks, and Calvin Ridley now as tight end – or wide receivers – you got Tony Pollard as a running back now, more pass uh, catcher friendly out of the backfield, not the power run game that you're going to see from Henry. I would imagine this is going to make Tennessee a lot more of a an air attack offense. The defense is going to be rough, though. That's going to be where they're going to struggle, I think. Yeah, that still could be. Um, Brian Callahan, first-year head coach over here. Yeah, took our, took our offensive line coach, too. Jerk. Yes. It's only his dad, <laughs> but still jerk. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Titans are going to, yeah, like that's probably going to be when we talk more NFL preview type stuff. This is going to be one of those interesting teams. Now it makes you interested what they're going to do at that seventh pick they got. I think they're still going to address the offensive, offensive line. line. When you get the best yeah. offensive line coach, that's where you go. Yeah. yeah who who else moved receiver-wise? Too, but... Who else moved receiver-wise? I'm trying to think. Who else was there? Well, Mike Evans is staying. I yep, guess Mike that's Evans is yep. staying. Mike Williams got cut from the Chargers. Which is an interesting one. Uh, the Dallas Cowboys have done nothing in free agency. I uh, just always want to mention the Cowboys and how they've done nothing. They did re- extend their long snapper, so they did do something. They extended their long snapper, which is fun. Extended the long snapper. Hey, and then you see, you got the, you see the Skip Bayless tweet uh, all in. Yeah, I was like, okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Hall of Fame comma right there. Great, right there. Um, wide yeah, receiver. I'm, I'm checking through right there's now. There's not to see a if ton, there was though. Any. I don't think there was a ton of. Oh, um, another move was uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers trading Deontay Johnson yeah. to the Panthers. For for Dante Johnson. Or Dante Jackson. So it was like Deontay Dante Johnson Jackson, okay. got traded for Dante <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> Just okay. Yeah. Interesting, interesting for sure. I'm uh I'm checking through to see what uh just running through the big names and looking for the wide receivers that we might have missed. And even there. even was... other even other positions, there wasn't any huge things in other positions either. It was mainly running back. I'd, I'd say some of the, I'd say some of the big ones in other positions. Uh, Christian Wilkins going from Miami yeah. to the Raiders is huge. That's a four year, hundred and ten million dollar yeah. contract. And it's also going to further the need for defensive line help, I think, for the Dolphins, which we were talking about, like maybe the Tavandre Sweat route or yeah. something like that over and there. Then, so I think that's going to further cement that pick. Browns got Jordan Hicks. Um, so there was that yes. linebacker move. Um, trying to think what else moves defensively. Yeah, I'm I'm coming up on a couple here. We got uh, – Oh, Zadarius Smith got Xavier re-signed McKinney. By, the, by the Browns. Yes, Zadarius Smith re-signed in Cleveland. Big one. Bro. We got Xavier McKinney going from the Giants to the Packers. Oh, uh, got... Green, Green Yard from Green Greenhard or Green Yard from uh, Texans got traded to the not not traded signed to the Vikings and the Vikings Hunter got signed by the Texans. So it was like a swap. Okay. 
Brian Burns traded from the Panthers to the Giants. Dude, by the way, the Panthers, man, according to Luke Combs, which I, I don't understand what they're doing. I, did you see his thing where he's like, what are we doing? Like you, you literally had a chance to get a couple years ago, get CMC. You basically got like four first rounders for him. You could have got yeah. Brian Burns. You could have got two first rounders last year for him. Like all these dudes. I'm like, dude, you're literally like, what are you waiting for? Like, do you think it's going to get better? Like it's not wine. Right. It's like you got to get what whatever's there for it. So that that's but that's besides the point. But there's that one. Jordan uh, Jordan the, Poyer yeah, Jordan going Porter, over yeah. to the Dolphins, which is a good pickup. Good pickup. And then possibly the other big defensive move, uh, also in our division, Patrick Queen to yes. Pittsburgh. Which I love. All the Ravens guys are like traitor we're done with you and i'm like oh yeah. i love rivalries i love rivalries this is one that i missed but daniel hunter leaving the vikings and that's going what i was saying texans. yeah yeah so i was saying it's like Hunt, hunter left to go to the texans and then the texans green yard or green i don't know how to pronounce his name but he left from the texans to go to the vikings which was basically like a trade swap pretty much and and I'm going to throw this one out. It's not huge, but since we were talking about the Pittsburgh Steelers quarterback room, Mason Rudolph is signing a one-year deal with Tennessee. Oh yeah, I love. Have you? Mm-hmm. Did you see the video where it said like he made fun, he mocked uh, Russell Wilson and he said like Steeler Nation, let's ride two years ago, and it has like him now like packing his bags, and it says like mm-hmm. Russell Wilson like Steeler Nation, let's Steel ride. Steel got it. Steel got it. There's I that one. What was the other one I saw? There was one that was like let's meddle or something like that i'm like no that's just that's let's not do that let's not do that but yeah outside of that there wasn't any crazy uh any other crazy moves so yeah i, um, I mean a couple other small ones drew lock to the giants of course uh kenneth murray from the chargers going to the titans linebacker uh, Jeremy Chin signed a one-year deal from or with Washington from Carolina before. And this is why you do multiple mock drafts. Yes. This is why. Multiple mock drafts because different moves happen all the time. But yeah, I think that's that's most there. That covers a lot of the big ones. Uh Landon Dickerson Side extended with the yeah. Eagles and made himself the highest paid guard in NFL history. And he said he's gonna buy a zero turn mower with it. That's what he said in a. In and a then piece. Michael Pittman already was tagged, but yeah, signed a three or seventy million deal. And uh, deal Higgins, I believe, for the Bengals request. said he wants to be traded. So request might to be the trade, the yes. Um, and and did we talk about Mac Jones getting traded to the Jags? We just refused to because it's a pointless thing to talk about. <laughs> yeah, would have been pointless if you stayed in New England. Would have been pointless exactly. whichever team you got traded to. It just he's not a good quarterback. It's just it's just a fact. Yeah. Just a fact. Uh the other the other deal that I really liked uh that happened and it was announced I think before free agency like officially opened up, but Chris Jones staying in Kansas City. Yep. I remember like it was it last year that he yep. was holding out. Yeah, yeah. And everybody was calling him like selfish and whatnot, but then he just proved to be like the most valuable player on the team this year and made exactly. all the plays in the Super Bowl that proved why you need him. Yeah. And here they give him a five-year, ninety-five million dollar deal, or a five-year deal that includes ninety-five million guaranteed. It is wild. Love it for Kansas City and for him. It is wild, but I think that's that's most of the most of the free agent stuff. Uh, I think. Yeah, I mean, there's there's so many. We there's so really many. Talk like we could a spend a whole them. episode, which we will continue yeah. updating you. Like you, if you follow our story, I always post like the new whatever new things happen, I always try to share it. So you guys are informed with that. But then on top of that, I'm as the weeks go on, we'll, we'll I'm sure we'll share, but speaking on the football front, I know we, I know Josh and I want to talk briefly about March madness before we end today's show. But before we get to that, before we get the news that I want to talk about that I'm very upset about, and I'm sure Josh is eager to hear my <laughs> opinion on it. I do want to talk about Ohio state. I don't know if you saw the punter they signed for this cup coming year. He let me just tell you his size. Okay, listen to this. He's six seven, two hundred and sixty five pounds, and punts the ball ninety yards in the air. Yeah, I mean that's from Australia. I, the first thought was from Australia, right? And yes, he told me, "Yep, Australia." He, he literally. So he's going to be punting this coming year. Like he just uh, just got his scholarship offer uh, committed. He'll sign it, I think, in June. But can you imagine, like? 
he, by the way, he practices holding the ball. Like, I don't know about you. I've held field goals before. It's hard for me. And I'm like six, three. Can you imagine a six foot seven, 250 pound man? Try, like, it's just such a small space. And I just think it's, it's wild. But Josh, do you want to lead into this before I blow a fuse and you can ask me what you want to know? I mean, it's, it's Tony Alfred going to Michigan an Ohio state assistant coach not being fired by the university, but willingly choose to pack up his bags and go up north. He's had enough. He's lost to, to Teton three years in a row, and he's throwing in the towel on Ryan Day. He doesn't believe in this team that he's put together. He doesn't believe in Quinshawn Judkins and Travion Henderson. He wishes that they would have just declared for the draft. He was hoping Ryan could get fired. He's mad that Will Howard's coming over. He just doesn't believe in the team, and so he's going where they win championships. So Shut that's up. pretty cut and dry to me. I don't <laughs> – that's all a joke, guys, okay? I love, like, joining the Michigan cult and, like, just talking the way that they do yeah, it's, sometimes. It's so... But in all honesty, it, in Tony all, Alford yeah. getting out of Ohio State has been buzz, I think, for a little oh, while. It's been over for Mostly a year. just because yeah. – mostly just because it seemed like he had topped out, like did really well recruiting. And then Travion kind of had like the, the step back. He did season okay last year. though. He did okay. Yeah. He's never like just all the great. injuries yeah. and stuff. And then, and then it just seemed like they didn't have that next big running back recruit that he signed. Yeah. So it was like, is Tony Alford done? Yeah. I mean, but then he obviously redeems himself. Look, and I'm now gonna, he's leaving. I'm going to say you this. really wanted him to stay. This is what I'm going to say. So I've had, I've had time to think about this before we recorded this today. And this is my thought, and I'm and I'm sure Josh can. Uh, he probably knows where I'm going with this, but look, he had a one year deal, right? He got a uh, he had a one year deal. Uh, the, he had the ended this year, and then supposedly this is what the rumors are: is that he, I think the last, I think last year and this year, he only offered him like a one year deal, like didn't give him like a three-year extension like he did with like Keenan Bailey and he did with, you know, Brian Hartline and stuff. And yeah, let me get it wrong. Like the running backs this year played pretty well, even outside of Travion being hurt. Um, but to be honest, if you look at his recruiting rankings, like he's always gotten like, like usually one good running back in the, in the class, but never the top guy. He's been a great developer, right? Ezekiel Elliott, JK Dobbins, um, Trey Sermon, mm -hmm. Um, now Travion Henderson, like great. He's, he's been, he was able to help with Quinshawn Judkins. Um, he's got, he's kept Dallin Hayden around to me. What bothers me the most, and I'll be honest, supposedly he's been, this has been in the works for a while since Mike Hart kind of like stepped away. There's been this like rumblings, but also that he's been looking at other schools, USC, a lot of other schools. The thing that bothers me the most, honestly, Josh, is that. Look, and I believe most Buckeye fans will agree with me on this. It's not that he's going to leave. I think a lot of people knew that there was going to be a time where he was going to leave. Did, was it going to be this year or not? It's two things that bother people. It's the fact that he waited until mid-March to say, I'm leaving. And then on top of that, it was not just mid-March, but it's like you of all the teams you chose, you chose a team for the last decade you have like hated. Like you've done in your prep, your you know, prep talks before games, you're like, hey, we're, we're going to beat this team up north. And I, it just, it's weird for me. Does that make sense? Like, it just, to me, mm -hmm. it just feels like there's more of this, like maybe um, am, like this, not hatred, but this like frustration between Ryan Day and him. And I don't know if, and again, I don't know him, so I don't know what he's thinking, but maybe I can get Josh's thoughts on this because I am kind of biased. But to me, it feels like, it's like, hey, I was upset that I'm not getting this trust value of like, give me multiple year contracts. You know, Fleming got a two year extension last year as a special teams guy and he like sucked, right? Or is it this like, hey, oh, Michigan's got an opening because he's not getting much more money. He's not making much more. He's doing the exact same thing he was doing here. Is it like stick it to the man and be like, hey, I'm just going to go who's beat you because I just want to be that guy. Um, I think it'd be really funny if then the, Ohio State goes out and gets someone for like a three-year deal and is like, oh, yeah, we'll sign him to a three-year deal. Um, no, it's just frustrating. I mean, it's going to hurt. I'm interested to see what happens to Dallin Hayden. Dallin Hayden and the two freshmen are the ones I'm really interested to see what happens, right? Like, because I think Quishon Jenkins and Henderson, they're going to be like, I think they'll stay. Like, I don't see them, tra like, there's no need to. They wouldn't fall into Michigan, especially Henderson. Um, but Dallin Hayden's the one that I, I wouldn't be shocked if 
when the new transfer portal, which starts in April, turns around. Do not be shocked. I'm quoting this right now for all Buckeye fans. Do not be shocked if Down Hayden is a Michigan Wolverine by the end of the year. Don't be shocked. I like that. I'm relationship surprised is, that they retained as many running backs yeah. as they did. That, that, re- that, it's like that relationship, not all play. yeah, that relationship is huge that he has with him. So, um, those are my thoughts. Uh, I, I'm definitely frustrated. Um, but again, I I can't I can't blame the guy. He wants to go and coach, and he's been here for ten years. He's done a lot of great things. So hats off. But screw you too. You went to Michigan. So um, that's that's kind of how I feel. Um, but at the end of the day too, like that opens the door for Eddie George. Maybe he steps away from a head coaching job, kind of like Chip Kelly comes back home. I think that'd be a great fit. I think it's a great guy to go get. Um, but I'm interested to hear what you think, Josh, like, do you think I'm off basis with anything or do you think it's, it in a way it, it could be some of those things? I think you stick it to Michigan and go sign Mike Hart to be your new running back That's coach. what I was saying too. It'd be hilarious. <laughs> but I don't think I would ever, cause Mike Hart said some no, really bad so- things about Ohio State. I don't know. Uh, I guess we only have the rumors to go off of. I didn't know if this was a move that happened because Tony Alford was not getting a raise or if he was not getting a promotion, yeah. more responsibilities and trust. And if it was just the long-term contract was the issue, that is interesting to me because, like you said, Michigan is not giving him much more money. And it's not like they're running, running back. Not, running back not better. getting to be a coordinator yeah. at Michigan. He's, I mean, it's a lateral move, you could argue. And it's not even the better running back. It's the only difference. Right, right right now you only got Donovan Edwards there and then whatever they got coming in uh, recruiting. But if that is all it is, it's just wanted a longer contract. I'm sure he could have gotten that at a lot of other places. When you're the running back coach at Ohio State. He's turned down so many jobs, man. He's turned down so many jobs. He has. He's been, they've attempted to poach him. A lot of times you choose Michigan and he has stayed. You choose Michigan. Yeah. So this, this does kind of seem like like a little bit of a, a stick. Would you say he's going to be the most, he's going to be the most hated man when he walks in in November into Ohio stadium. Do you think he's going to get a lot of uh, (laughs) friendly remarks as they would say? (laughs) Uh, I I think it's more so going to be the players and Sherman more honestly, will get the most. And I mean, Alfred is obviously going to catch some flack because of this move. Yeah, but that that is. Also George, do you think Eddie George is a of, good move, though? Do you think Eddie George is a good? A, a Eddie George good, is cool. I mean, it it would be uh kind of like that unexpected like James Lornitis hire. I don't know if it'd be an upgrade, but it'd be like a James Lornitis hire. You bring back a guy who played and yeah, and go from there. Like a James Lornitis hire, exactly. Yeah, uh, I'm sure Eddie would be great. Um, obviously he cares about the university, yeah. loves Ohio State. It's just a matter of pulling him from a head coaching spot and. Yeah. I think he's also coaching at HBCU, yep. which there's a little bit more of a meaning to coaching in a place like that. And the whole reason he took that job to begin with is because he wants to try to, you know, help HBCUs and put them on the map. So it's a little more than just being a head coach at a G5 school somewhere else. It's... Dion, Dion did that. He left and. Yeah, but you right. knew it wasn't just. Sorry. Gonna, I know. I know. Like, not going to stay there forever. I, I don't think that A. George is looked at the same as Dion Sanders no. is in the coaching but... world. It's interesting. Um, so just so everyone the timing knows. of this too, because he lost to Michigan three years in a row, and he's probably going to go to Ohio State now, or Michigan leave Ohio State and go to whooped. Michigan now and lose whooped. the game three years in a row again. Dude, it's just funny. It would just be funny. Um, but yeah, that's my opinion. So if you all want to know if I'm mourning, yes, I'm mourning. But um, to finish up the show, uh, before we finish up here in the next couple of minutes, Josh, I know Josh wanted to talk about briefly because next week is the time where you get to see Josh. It is. This is conference butchered. tournament week. Yes. This is conference tournament week, folks. So, and we will be doing, we will be doing picks. Yet. We will be doing picks uh, on the show, which we are is probably one of our other favorite times of the year. So be ready for that next week. Mm-hmm. So we ended the regular season, Ben, with three teams that finished 28 and three, your number one, Houston Cougars, your number two, Yukon Huskies, your number three Purdue Boilermakers. And the Ohio State Buckeyes beat Purdue. Just want to point that out. That is one of the three losses. Uh, I'm also going to shout out my North Carolina Tar Heels at four they did. Hey, for beating Duke twice congratulations. in the same season. Anytime you. you get to beat the rival two times. I, I was watching the final two minutes of the game on my break at work and it was just like, they're, they're up by nine with a minute 30 left. And then I think it got down, it cut down to three. And I was just like, please don't screw this up. And, they pulled through. I'm so. so happy for you. You know, you have a team that's actually worth watching. So, congrats. 
that's a team worth watching. But preliminary thoughts, Ben. Obviously, the yes. tournament brackets aren't set up yet, but I assume that all three of these teams are going to yeah. be one seeds. Yeah, yeah. You will probably have a toss-up between Carolina, Tennessee, and Arizona for that fourth yeah, number yeah. one spot, depending on how uh, the teams do in the conference tournaments. But just running through things, Ben, I mean, it always looks like – I mean, those teams are at the top for a reason. Yeah. And you can look through Houston. Houston's second in the country in point differential. They're first in defensive points allowed. Uh, you look at um, Arizona, a team that's second in rebounds, a team that's fourth in point differential. You look at a team like – or and also Arizona, second in the country in scoring. You look at UConn. UConn Huskies are third in point differential. And I, this is the thing that was crazy to me, Ben. I was looking through the Houston stats, and I was like, okay, you know, they got three guys here that score, like, average double digits. They got three guys yeah, yeah. that average about a block a game. They got four guys that shoot about 30% from three. I'm like, that's a pretty sick roster to, you know, bring into a tournament. Until you look at UConn and how they got five guys that average double figures. Dude, they're nuts, man. Starters. They got four guys that average – 40 points from behind or 40 percent from beyond the three-point line and an eight or actually nine that shoot at least 30. Uh, they got one guy that averages over two blocks a game and they got two more that average about one. Uh, you look at Tristan Newton averaging 15 points, seven rebounds, five assists, shoots 40 from the field. It's just like, man, they're they're loaded. I they're so they loaded. are loaded. I I hate to say it because I'm a Carolina fan, but UConn might be my my early pick to repeat. No, and no, repeating I, is hard. Yeah, but... it is. It's really hard, especially in men's basketball. I think in women's basketball, yeah. no offense, no offense to women's basketball. I'm just saying it's a little Full bit offense. easier. Um, also, we don't have fights in men's basketball that for no reason and brothers of people jumping in and pushing it. In many ways, if you don't know what I'm talking about, look it up on YouTube. Um, <laughs> but um, no, men's basketball, yeah. I, to me, uh, I can tell you this, is Purdue will get knocked out in like the second round. That's just – that's what Purdue does. If you lose to Ohio State, then – especially this year, then you it's should It's what probably... they do. They're always that team, whether they're a four seed, a three seed, or whatever, that do you also teams that gets upset first. Do you also think it's weird that they've retired like eight numbers now? Like they've retired – that's like got to be some of the most in college basketball. Like they retired Eddie's number before he's even done. Like They retired me... Eddie's number? Yeah, they retired it over the weekend. So you have his is retired. They have wow. like uh, number fifty, number fifty five. There's like number twenty two. They're, they're, they have they like retired. Eight. Do you know names like is Carson Edwards there? Hum, uh, yeah, Jayden Edwards, Ivy, Robbie hum, Hummel, Ivy Hummel. Uh, uh, what was the other guy? Uh, Fanagan? No. Uh, what was like uh, big dude? Uh, I forget his name. Anyways. Uh... But they have yeah. like they have like it's Swanigan, 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 however you pronounce. Oh, it. Caleb Swanigan. Yeah. So they they I looked at the like the where his number was getting retired, and there's like eight or nine numbers, and I was like, how do you, it's college basketball? Like, I believe like I believe at Cedarville they've retired only like I think it's like three or four. I can't remember. I think it's three or you four. You would think like North Carolina Duke definitely got about yeah. that much. I personally, but don't like know. I'm just looking at Purdue like like, and I think they retire. You're based not on, like, them. I think it's You're partly them, that, Purdue. It's probably also that they they retired dudes that were all Americans, but it's like, I get if it's a two time all American like Eddie and I believe Swanigan was one as well, but like, I get that, but it's like okay, some anyways. That's just a tangent, but it's just weird to me. <laughs> but no, they will be that way. I, I agree with you on UConn. I think UConn has, has got a good good shot. I think another one is I think Houston. This could be Houston's year where they they kind of can pull it out. Um, other teams that could shock uh james madison i mean they're they're really good uh um fau another really solid mid-major team dayton's really good this year year. dayton's pretty good this year i know fau's coach is on the seat for possibly the buckeyes job um yeah i mean there's a lot of good teams and it's gonna be fun to see at the end of the weekend what our brackets are gonna look like and um, yeah (laughs) we'll have to we'll have to get maybe you know Rebecca's in here and see what you know what team she decides to pick this year. Kentucky's um, another one of those teams that I'm yeah. going to be keeping an eye on. Uh, Arizona's one of those two, yeah. like along the lines of Purdue. That's just they're always one of those teams that gets upset early. I I don't understand it. They've gone through coaching changes over the years, and obviously you know and teams change. Gonzaga is probably going to do what they normally do. They get to the Sweet Sixteen and then just choke. 
which is what they normally it's do. It's like, hey, you you did really well out here in the the GWAC or whatever the heck yeah. conference it is, you know, beating G-wacky. everybody <laughs> by forty. I I don't know what the heck their conference is. It's oh, I'm just boy. making up names, I know but. You are. Dude, the one team that I hope we get to see is Indiana State with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Dude, he is awesome, dude. I just love watching him play. Like <laughs> he just reminds me of me what I wanted to be as like a dude with like glasses. I just wish he wore high socks to his knees, man. That would just fit. Like, he that would is be Robbie Avila, if you don't know who we're talking about, a 6'10", 240 pounds, sophomore watches. center from Oak Forest, Illinois. Oak Average Forest. 17 and 6, shoots 55% what? from the field. Oak Forest. And he, he wears looks, goggles. Doesn't he look like a guy that like is from Oak Forest? Like from a guy that would just like that's the town that it sounds like he'd be from. Oak Forest. From Oak Forest. Yes. Um but yeah, if you're wondering uh why his name nickname is Kareem Abdul Jabbar, you'll just have to look him up on the court trust and you'll me. understand. Okay, you'll understand instantly. 100%. Uh we also know that Caitlin Clark is now the all-time division one scoring leader which to- somehow makes her the greatest of all time i mean I, yeah. if you score the okay. most points in men's or women's college basketball i mean it makes you the best score of all time right but you have uh marovich or whoever she passed who by the way scored three thousand seven hundred points without playing as a freshman because he wasn't allowed back then and there was no three-point line freshman could not i just, just want to point that no out by the line. way that's why that stat has always been incredible to me that it's blocking. him of all people just mind-boggling yeah. to me. And then the other guy that was just behind him, that was three points behind him, uh, Davis, I think it was his name, played for, like, Illinois, Chicago. He played for six years. It took him six A years long time, to get there. yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Meanwhile, yeah. Caitlin Clark has played four seasons of college basketball and has a three-point line. And this is the thing. I think she's amazing for the game of women's basketball. But there there's also like the the whole like kobe i, I think the crane brothers talked about uh, crane brothers talked about this like she did the whole kobe like with the big 10 championship and, and she did crane, the kobe photo the crane, for a the, conference was, tournament yes. and the crane brothers were like and this is for a conference title like okay <laughs> like you can't say you're the same you can't say yeah, you're making a difference is, when that's what you're winning that is not the same that is a reach that's if a i ever reach. saw one a big reach um but we, so, like we said, next week um, possibly will come out a little bit earlier than normal because we'll we'll probably record a, a tad earlier, um, just to make sure we get out the the brackets and everything. But um, maybe we'll even do a we can maybe I'll have to talk with Josh about this off off air. But maybe we'll even do like our own bracket challenge on ESPN. Maybe we, maybe mm-hmm. we set up a, a a you know fifth and goal does one. So go you'll go join theirs of course. I won it I think last year or the year before. So I just want to point that out. Um, but maybe we can do one, you know, the uh, baseline podcast. I mean, we do have like basketball in our name, so I feel like we should do one. I feel like that's just that's what works. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys um, enjoyed this episode um, a little bit. Do we've been like doing like variety episodes this past few weeks? We've been doing like guests with Quentin on. We've been doing a whole mock draft episode this week. We've been just bashing free agent moves i mean man next week it's brackets and then we'll be back to mock drafts again dude it's the best time of the year um but anyways we hope you guys enjoy uh enjoy this episode if you have make sure you click that thumbs up but thumbs up button subscribe button notification bell on youtube let us know that you love it comment below who had truly the best mock draft now that you think about it and also do you think the browns will win the super bowl next year yes or no below and if you uh, and if you love lifting on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, make sure you share it with your friends and family. Give us a five star rating, and um, yeah, that will make us really happy. And also make Josh, maybe Very Josh happy. will, maybe Josh will. A uh, Carolina championship would make me happy oh, too. But... Shut up, just stop it. Um, well, they'll choke. Um, no, why am I saying anything? The, the high state sucks, so I don't know why I'm saying anything. Um, what a story of redemption this could be to go from be. an eight seed in the tournament a couple years ago and make the run you did to being the preseason number one the next year and not even making the tournament to earning a one seed and winning it all. It's true. It would it be, would be, it would be very uh, 2000. Well, not the same as 2017's run, but it would be it incredible. would be similar fairy tale esque story. It would be. And you was fairy tale story is us in the podcast I, I don't know it was a terrible terrible segue but anyways i hope you guys have an amazing weekend make sure you guys check out some conference conference tournament action keep up on the instagram you'll be able to see all the stories that are happening and until next time we'll see ya